Do you eat like snail and cow tongue? No, okay, I've assessed your level. The world is full of amazing women who have done remarkable things in their lives. Voila. My whole life has been a risk. I want to meet some of them and hear their best piece of advice. Nothing great is easy. If you want something easy, then you're not doing something great. That just one thing that has made them who they are today. Hello, Baroness. <laughs> I would love to hear your just one thing. And that might help me and you become better versions of ourselves. You're expecting your agent to look after you, but really, you're just a commodity. Yes, I'm pregnant again. <laughs> I'm gonna say what I have to say, you take it or leave it. I get really emotional about it. I don't know. This is my coffee, and I put collagen in it because it's just good for my hair and skin, I've been told. It's like putting bone broth in coffee, which doesn't sound great, but it's, it's good for you. I've been uncomfortable with the fact that I might be defined as having just one identity. I'm not just a social media influencer. I'm a mum, I'm a wife, I'm a sister, I'm a businesswoman, I am lots of different things. I really hope that people are going to tell me it's okay to have lots of different identities because I feel like I need to be more comfortable in who I am. I'm not quite there yet. I'm gassed to be meeting Kathy today. I see her on social media all the time and I feel like we live in this world now where you feel like you know people but you haven't actually met. Kathy is a DJ, producer and musician Born in Nigeria and now living in London, following in the footsteps of a billionaire father, Kapi is an entrepreneur who is featured on the Forbes 30 Under 30 list. So I don't actually know what I'm gonna wear today, but I've got colorful nails because I know she's kind of a colorful girl and I kind of wanted to be like, hey girl, we're matching. Do come in, come in, come in. This has not been seen on Instagram. I don't think I've seen this. Never. You are my first guest. I feel you, you and your many friends. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to order some food. Okay. I've got to keep it traditional. We've got to get that Nigerian food. Do you eat like snail and cow tongue? No. Okay, cool. I, I've, I've, I've assessed your level. <laughs> I love it. All right, so I'm going to go a bit hardcore. Hey, can I please get some agusi and pounded yam and also jollof rice? Thank you. It can be as spicy and peppery as it needs to be. This is for Nigerians. Yeah, OK. <laughs> Thank you. OK, everything's pink. <laughs> Should I show you my favorite thing? Yeah. It's the pink body part there. Well, I have this in white as well. Yay! So Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's that. Can you Not hold quite, on? But okay. I'm working on it. There's your jollof rice. Thank you. I went for pounded yam. There's some stew. I love that. So when did you actually move officially to London? So I moved to London at 13 because my dad had made a lot of money mm -hmm. very quickly and he just wanted us to have better education. And I have to say that what's made me who I am is my experience between being a Nigerian in England and also being like an international export in Nigeria. It's a play on both. So I'm Nigerian British. Yeah. Um, I guess. Like myself, yeah. but maybe a little in, different. Yeah, exactly. We're both Nigerian British. So in England, people don't consider me British. And then now that I'm this hybrid, even when I go home to Nigeria, they're like, oh, you're not really Nigerian anymore. Really? So a lot of my life, I feel displaced. And that's really pushed me to have my own identity. When I was building my career, I was literally constantly, oh, copy, Femi or Tedola's daughter. That's how the press were presenting me. People were booking me to DJ, so hopefully my dad would show up. Really? Literally. Yeah. You constantly feel like you're in this shadow of someone. Yeah. Now, the million dollar question is, or should I say million naira? Yeah. <laughs> Am I going to build a legacy that's a, as great as my dad? Will I forever be under his shadow? I don't know, but we'll find out. 
there's no denying that people will be aware that you come from a, a rich background. And actually, your name is like heiress. You're like heiress <laughs> to all of this. So you come from a background of money. Mm -hmm. Does it make you any happier? And it, does it define who you are? I would say no, but then it is nicer and easier to cry in a Ferrari <laughs> than it is on a bicycle in the cold. Yeah, do you know what? I agree. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, ha I'll have the Ferrari. I'll have the Ferrari. Yeah. You mentioned something about credibility, and this is something that I sometimes like battle with. Yeah. Does that did that play with you and how you wanted to be represent yourself? A hundred percent. Like when I first came here, Patricia, and I remember wanting to DJ. People didn't want to hear African music, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lie. For my first couple of years of being DJ Copy, I was a bit of a fraud. I was playing music that I didn't really like. People are scared of what they don't know. Yeah. And it's so crazy that the same people that were like, yeah, we don't want you because of that are the same people that are like, oh, Africa? Mm -hmm. Okay, copy, come. Wow. You know, I didn't know the power I had. Mm -hmm. I didn't know my strength was who I was. You know, to be yourself, as said by the great poet Drake, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. you have to know yourself. Yeah. Be you yeah. unapologetically. This is one of the reasons why I really wanted to have you on, is that you don't care what other people are going to say. And that is really, really powerful. So I'm going to end this with what's your, your just one thing you want to share. You were born in this world, Patricia, mm. as an original. So don't die as a copy. Oh. Celebrate your uniqueness and what's you, they can't take away from you. Can we get an amen on that? Amen. <laughs> DJ Cuppy is exactly her, as I thought she would be. Her just one thing was, you're born unique, so you shouldn't die a copy. I was like, oh, that hit kind of hard, you mm, know? Mm. Trying to be someone else, yeah. you know, doesn't necessarily work for anyone. True. So we can only be ourselves. Is that how you think you are or not? Or what do you think? Because I think it's, it's just hard to do that sometimes, isn't it? I am unapologetically me. Mm. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, let me pull back. Yeah. I think I just want to be able to do it more and feel really comfortable in that as well. Mm. Oh my gosh, we ate Nigerian food. How much did you eat? More than I needed to, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not having dinner tonight. I always say I'm a South Londoner for life. I was born and bred in South London. South London's a very multicultural place. People are bubbly. There's just a different energy that a lot of us have, and I think that really impacted my identity growing up. Living on an estate, being on benefits, you never felt like you were in control of your life. And actually, when I think about it, that's why I'm a control freak. A lot of people see me as pretty successful now, and they see me as a hustler, but this is the reason why I'm like this. The thing that my audience sees is that I'm nice. For such a long time, I've been avoiding trying to step on any toes or not say anything wrong, be nice, be sweet. So it's like I gave all my happy to online and then I never had any of it left over in the tank for my real life. So today I'm meeting up with Molly May. I'm a big fan, I follow her on Instagram, and I know that being in the public eye is pretty hard. I really want to kind of delve deeper into how that is like formed her as a person. Molly May Haig is an influencer whose profile rocketed after appearing on Love Island. There she met her partner, boxer Tommy Fury. She's now got more than 5 million Instagram followers and 1.5 million YouTube subscribers. There's actually an ice cream van. Amazing. Yay. Oh my gosh. Can I get a Mr. Whippy, please? Nice. This is Thank the way. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow. Look at my ice cream. It's, it's flopped. It's, 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 it's flaccid. Sad, it's, it's, flaccid. Flaccid. It's, a, it's a sad ice cream van. Oh, no. You didn't get it happy enough. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Let's quickly take a photo before perfect. this actually like drips nothing, and yeah. disappears. Yeah. Perfect. Yours is perfect. You're now like influencer but it all happened from you being on Love Island. Mm. Have you found it like hard? Because now you have this identity, like people look at you a certain way. Mm. And mm. do you feel like that's who you actually are? I, yeah, I think obviously 
I'm only 21, so people sometimes forget that. And I think people will often think, you know, she's this role model, she should be doing this, she should be that. There's so many perceptions of what I should be doing. Yeah. And I just try to live my life doing exactly what I would be doing without this job. I'm not majorly into like going out loads. I'm very much a homebody girl. Like I love being at home with my candles and my fire. Like I literally have the life of an 85 year old woman. <laughs> do you know what? You give me old lady yeah, energy and like I, a young girl's body. True. You do, you do. I don't you know do. where that came from. Oh, that's really good. Is it? it is more milky, actually. Oh, really? But in like a really good way. It's like okay. not too coffee. Good. -esque. Glad. Half of our job is like promoting, right? Other products. But do you ever feel like you're the product? Like you have to keep putting yourself out there? In some respects, yes, because as an influencer yourself, you're you are a brand. You're selling mm -hmm. yourself to your followers. So I guess if you look at it like that, you are a product. Mm. People in a normal job will go to an office, they come away from the office and then they're done work. But mm -hmm. me, I guess I never switch off from work because I am the work. Like You, you, you are, are the work. work. Yeah, am, we are it. It and is the job. Yeah. OK, now yeah. that we're here, we're comfortable, I want to ask you your just one thing. So it's the decisions you make in life don't always define the person you become. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that every day when you wake up, you can decide how that day goes. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be the same as the day before. Mm -hmm. Just think everything that you do helps you learn something. Mm -hmm. Everything's a lesson. So. Do you feel like because of like the position you're in, though, that you feel more nervous about those decisions? It's crazy, because the decisions that I'm making, people would normally go through life making without anyone judging them or anyone watching them. But you've got the added pressure of, I'm 21, making these decisions. and. I've got five million plus people watching me make these decisions mm. and judging me and thinking, OK, well, I wouldn't have done it like that. Yeah. Do you ever feel the pressure of people wanting you to slip up? Oh, oh my gosh, all the time. Do you feel like you have to develop a thicker skin because Ooh. of it? Yeah, I, I've always had quite a thick skin. Oh. I think you have to. I think you'll know as well. Yeah. You have to have a thick skin. I don't think industry. I have a thick skin. That's Do you my not? problem. Really? I'm like, I thought you. I thought you would have. No, I'm sensitive. Really? And that's why I like kind of have backed off. I'm like, no, because I'm sensitive. I'm yeah. not going to show you anything. I mean, yeah. Like I find it quite hard. It's hard, isn't it? It's like you want to give your audience what they want, but mm -hmm. also protect yourself. So it's yeah. like, how do you find that balance? But you have been trolled quite a bit. Mm. You were even talking about there's some websites where they talk about you and your mm. relationship. Sometimes I'll actually reply to people in my DMs that send me DMs, horrifying DMs, and I'll just message back and be like, what made you want to send this DM to me? And then they'll reply back and be like, oh my gosh, Molly May, I can't believe you replied, love you. Like, what? love, I know. And it's like, you're not. It's like, this really is crazy. Toxic. It, it, it's insane to think that these people are actually just trying to get a rise out of you. They're trying to get you to mm -hmm. reply mm -hmm. by sending you a foul message. Mm -hmm. It gives me a little kick. I'm like, this person will never think that I'm probably going to even see this message, but I have seen it. Yeah. And I want to see how they feel now they know that I've seen the message of them calling me fat. Mm -hmm. And now I'm replying, what are they going to say back? And the responses always fascinate me. Really? Yeah, they I'm always do. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. Do you not reply? Sometimes I do. If it really, really gets, gets to you, me, yeah. if it really gets to me, I'm going to actually tell you about yourself and then yeah. I'm going to screenshot it and then I'm going to put it on my story yeah. so my people come after <laughs> come you as well. Like, all right, yeah. let's do this. Not even right? scribble out the name. No, oh, no, them. there you go. There's your profile. <laughs> let's do that. Yeah. Right? What have you used to kind of get over the negativity? Just making myself as happy as I can possibly be. Like, I, I am so lucky that I have the life that I do now and the people around me that I do. Like, my circle is so small and mm -hmm. it's genuinely just filled with people that are super positive. And being around Tommy 24-7 is obviously great. Mm -hmm. like, those comments. Oh, my goodness, he's so good with dealing with them. I love it. He's, like, he somehow makes me feel like they just could not matter at all. So Molly's Just One Thing is decisions you make don't define who you are. And what I love is that she's focused on making sure she's happy and healthy internally in her personal relationships. And that's what actually matters. And it's a reminder to me, I've got a really happy home, so I have to not take the other stuff that happens outside like, too seriously. It feels weird, like, being back home. Mm. I've not actually been in here for a good while. Oh, I my know. gosh. I know, it feels kind of weird. I know. This it's is kind of empty, though. My Britney Spears. Oh, it's finished. You see, this was a classic, this one. This was me when I was, like, 18. Yeah, that was, like, 12 years ago. Oh, sorry. It's still Ex good, though. You can totally expose the age right now. We, we don't need that. Wait, look at this. Let's see what's in mm -hmm. here. 
<laughs> Warren. I don't know when to laugh print. or cry. I actually got that as a present. This is mine. No, it's not yours. This is mine. No, it's not. This is so mine. No, it's not. Here. OK, maybe we just share. Don't worry, you can have it. It's fine. I would say I'm a chameleon. I think we're all chameleons, but a lot of us don't allow ourselves to change our colours. Wow, this place is absolutely amazing. I'm actually feeling really nervous because Joan is a legend. Oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? I'm feeling good. I have a feeling that Dame Joan Collins is going to look fantastic. So I want to like kind of meet her at the levels of glamour. Dame Joan Collins is an award-winning actress and writer. Signed to a film studio as a teenager, she starred in films in Hollywood and Britain. Joan is best known for playing soap villain Alexis Colby in the iconic 80s series Dynasty. I think it's going to be the power suit. It's very 80s. I've been watching a lot of Dynasty and there was a lot of suits that were amazing with the shoulders. She's in the building. Oh. <laughs> Stress levels went up just then. All right. I'm ready. Wow. It's so amazing to meet you. Oh, it's great to meet you, Patricia. Don't you love this room? I've never been here before, so just seeing oh. this is, like, out of this world, and I hear that this is one of your favourite places to this stay. This is my favourite hotel. Yeah. In London. Now, I have a question for you. Oh, yes. OK. OK. I've been on Instagram for about four years. OK. Do you know how many followers I have? Mm, I don't. It's pathetic. I have 237,000 followers. Oh, that's not pathetic. It's not? No. Jane Fonda's got four million. And so has Goldie Horn. Dita Von Teese, she's got 20... Oh, well, she does get a lot. Oh, yeah, <laughs> but you yeah. can understand why. Exactly. Uh, well, Dita, I was yeah, going to I'm not that. about to do that, <laughs> no. Anyway, what is it? Do you have any advice? I think the more you show your face, doing the everyday, oh, I'll really? say mundane, but it might be really glamorous. I've never done any of that. Oh, no, they love it. Are you into gardening? Oh, they like gardening, do they? They love gardening. OK, so this is one that I did yesterday. I only got 8,000 likes. But the day before, I did my garden covered in snow, and I got 29,000. There you go. I said gardening, didn't I? That's it. Yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah, people love You're that kind of stuff. You're going to be my guru yeah. for this. OK. So you started out from nine years old, and then you've just had this long, long career. Have you felt like you had to embody a different identity throughout that journey? Absolutely. Yeah. I've been about eight different people. OK. You know, certainly when I think back to myself going to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, where I was going to become stage actress, <laughs> I did not wish to be a movie star at all. OK. Because we all thought, although we loved movie stars, we didn't think they could act. Oh. No. And then okay. I realised that this could be quite a lucrative job. Then I became a sort of Britain's bad girl which my parents were appalled about. Appalled. Oh Voila! The Royal Suite. We've had so many wonderful events. My damehood party, which was fantastic, and we are going to have our 20th wedding anniversary here. This is the bedroom. We had our honeymoon here, so I can tell you the beds are very comfortable. <laughs> Come and see the bathroom. Look at the towels. I don't know how you get towels, that Buffy. Should we steal one? <laughs> Let's go. Let's take she the towels. Is. She's stealing one from Clarence. Help! Please! <laughs> so Alexis was this character you played, but I think there were some similarities. Some similarities? Yes. She had a good sense of humour. OK. I love the fact that she uh, lived her life like a man, sexually. Yeah. You know, at that time, if she wanted somebody, she took them. Yeah. And she also used her sexuality to get what she wanted, which I didn't really approve of, but I kind of admired. Do you know That's what amazing. I mean? So I'm in my transitional phase when it comes to my career, and I do feel a bit nervous about getting a bit older and feeling like I might not be relevant anymore. Oh. So. Do you have any advice for me? It's very difficult, because I've had so many brickbats thrown at me through the years. 
I mean, particularly in my early days, oh, yeah, she's very lovely, but she can't act, you know, and that's all they said about me in Alexis. She can't act. She's just playing herself. How did you deal with those labels? Did it affect you? Yes, I found it quite hurtful. Yeah. I'm not very confrontational, but I think you have to believe in yourself. And also you have to think, I will never be as young or good looking as I am today. <laughs> yeah, that's something. I think that's some great advice there. Yeah. And actually, I would love to hear your just one thing. Always look on the bright side of life. Wake up and don't think, oh, God, it's another terrible day. Mm -hmm. Wake up and think how great the coffee smells or look, the sun is shining or it's raining. You yeah. know, be grateful for what you've got because so many people don't. Dame Joan Collins, just one thing. It sounds pretty simple, but I think sometimes it's the hardest thing to do is to look on the bright side of life, especially when things don't look like they're going the right way. But I think this is all about where you focus your energy, and I love that. Meeting up with these amazing women has been so eye-opening. I think looking back on what do I want to take from it, every single one of them, I'm like, yeah, that, that was for me. Talking to these women has really given me the chance to reflect on myself. I know there are times where I sometimes hold back because I don't want to receive criticism, but I think what I want to do is be a little bit thicker skinned and I recognize it's okay for me to be myself. No apologies, this is me, just Patricia. Meeting Joan was so funny because she was talking about wanting to grow on Instagram. And I was like, Katie, <laughs> yeah. I love it. I gave her some tips around gardening. So how with Liza Minnelli, That's as it. you do, just living your best life. Wow. Well, she's got a picture with the plant, so that counts. Hashtag be more Joan. Well, yes, but I'm actually trying to be more me. So, <laughs> so maybe not, but no, hashtag be more Joan. I love it.